Sunday school, sleeping right down with promotion. God bless all of you who came here tonight. And I'm glad your time, my friend. Look, greet him. Give him a hand of applause. God is good. And all the time. Amen. We'll try this side. God is good. And all the time. I can't bring my microphone a little bit up because I can't hear myself. And um, amen. It's so good to be here. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, it's, it's a blessing to be here. I've been here a long time ago. Um, some of you guys were still in elementary school, already old. And, uh, but it's good to see a lot of new faces and Val took over now and stuff is so, so it's really, really awesome. And uh, what the Lord will be doing tonight and what the Lord is doing. And uh, you guys have an awesome choir. We also came with the choir. We just need microphones. And then <laughs> we can also, we brought a whole crew and so all the people from Tri-Cities. We can stand to your feet. This is everybody from Tri-Cities, include, including you, Roman. Let's give them a round of applause. Now, yeah, you can t you guys take your seats. There's only about a few of them that are married. The rest of them are single, ready to mingle. And, uh, and that is the, <laughs> the ultimate reason and purpose for some of them coming here. But at the end of the day, some of you guys are very young. I'm looking at some of you. You guys are very, very young. And so God's time is the best. Amen. <laughs> it's like in that church, one pastor was trying to raise money for the building project. And he said that whoever will, don will donate $1,000 to the building project, they'll choose next Sunday, next three hymns in the church. Hymns is songs. And so this lady, uh, she gave $1,000 and the pastor says, so which three hymns you want us to sing next Sunday? She said, I want him, him, and him. <laughs> you never know. I'm also really happy here. My wife uh, has left a few days before me and so I came also to pick her up. Uh, from Tri-Cities, from, uh, from Vancouver. I've been married to her for 1,359 days. And uh, it's been an uh, adventurous time. And some of you can use the calculator to divide that by how many years that is. But I'm um, really, really blessed to be with her. Let's give her a round of applause as well. She's a, she's a phenomenal painter and just a very wonderful, wonderful uh, person. But she can paint uh, so much better than I could ever preach. And when she was 15, I think her painting was one second place in France and third place in South Africa and stuff. So um, she's a phenomenal, phenomenal person. If you have Instagram, follow her. Not right now. And uh, if you are today, you came f with the phone and you have a cell phone with you because I'm noticing not everybody has notebooks. I want you to get your phone out. And after you add Hungry Generation on Facebook, um, I want you after that, find notes on your phone. Everybody get your phones out, including you. And so get your phones out. I want you to go to notes on your phone. And um, every single service that we do on the, youth, on the youth, we really encourage every single young person to write everything down. Something that stands out to you that you take notes. The reason why is because the currency in the kingdom of God is attention. You know, most of you and us, young people, we broke like a joke. That means we, don't, we can't pay, you know, much when the offering basket comes in, you know, there's, there's not much. But there's one thing that you can pay to God in the church. It's called attention. That's why we say pay attention. Because attention is something you pay. And the amount of attention you put in is the amount of the blessings of God you will get out. Amen. It's like in flying. If you ever flew in a plane, you know that there is a first class and then there's the rest of the us economy. Called <laughs> broke people. You know, and the difference between first class and the economy, well, if you never flew the first class, you have no idea the difference. But you may say, well, it's the same plane, same flight, you know, same pilot, same thing, same distance. We, we're, they're not flying faster than us. They're not flying faster than you, but they're sure enjoying a lot more leg room and so many other things that you're their wish to have. Only for one reason. Not because these people are special and not because the pilot is racist and so he puts you on the back and he puts these like people in the front. No, it's only because of one thing, they pay more. Same flight, same experience, same plight, same plight, same pilot, same distance, same speed, different price and different experience. 
you can be sitting in the same church same preacher a same sermon a same everything the same but a person beside you pays more attention and they get out more than the person beside you who just simply says there scrolls through Facebook whenever they're bored scrolls through snapchat hey this is me at church and all this stuff and then they get out and nothing happened and the other person beside you walks out and they're free from depression they're free from back pain or they're free from this or that why because when you pay attention God rewards somebody say amen 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 and so just really want to challenge you did you did you take notes I do that myself when my pastor preaches I take notes and some things like he says God loves you I write that down sometimes you forget and so it, it, you don't have to write some people are like well it's not deep enough excuse me what am I, what, what we mean by saying it's not deep enough means it's not confusing enough and so most of us are looking for a confusing sermon because we're like well I had no idea what he said but it sounds so interesting that is not the point the point is you write down things the Lord wants to speak to your life and he wants to do that. and when you do that another reason it helps you to pay attention amen and so this is just a small instruction we always give that in our youth service because as young people our attention spin is a little bit slighter larger than a goldfish which is three seconds and so when we write things down it helps us to it helps us to pay attention as a young person um, I'm, I'm very young a um, little bit older than some of you but through my little small fragile life I've experienced few simple lessons from the Lord and, and one of them is before we go into the Word of God I just wanted to throw it out there for you is um, with God your plan A will not probably work the plan that you have for your life this perfect plan who you're going to marry where you're going to live what you're going to do the calling you're going to pursue um, you have to understand with the Lord is the most likely the things that you plan for are not going to happen the plan plan A may not work but always God has sometimes plan Z and God's plan Z might be so much better than your plan A things I planned at 16 and things that I planned for at 17 did not really happen but the things God had in plan were so much better than the things I had planned and I'm so great there's more than one letter in the alphabet because most of us think if my A doesn't work the world ends I'm committing suicide walking out of this life I, that's it my life is over because she got married to someone else he got married to someone else or because that position is taken or you know I couldn't get hired at this place or you know there's so many youth I wanted to be a youth pastor there's already a youth pastor I wanted to be a worship leader and you guys have like 25 worship teams here and so everybody's taken everything is taken already my life is over listen there's other letters in the alphabet and God can go from A to B to other until he finds yours and sometimes the Z is better than A when you get to Z can somebody say amen and you have to understand one more thing as young people is this is that you have expectation of life you have expectation of God and of calling and you must understand Jesus will not meet some expectations that you have when he does not meet some expectations that you have trust him to exceed them when Jesus had a friend named Lazarus and Lazarus was sick fever dying things are hard and there's no good medicine no medical insurance and no doctor around who knows what to do and Lazarus is dying but he has Jesus and he texts Jesus says Jesus I am sick would you come and help me and Jesus sees the text and ignores it no reply for three days in three three days later Jesus comes on the scene and Lazarus is gone he is buried everybody already went home and Lazarus is gone and Jesus shows up say hey am I late they say yeah you are late and so they were disappointed in the fact that Jesus didn't come to heal him but see what I love about Jesus is that when he doesn't meet your expectations I can trust for him to exceed them because Jesus comes to Lazarus tomb and says yes I did not heal you can I raise you from the dead because resurrection from the dead is greater than healing which means sometimes the Lord will on purpose not give you something and you cry about it you weep about it oh my God. and after all he is done God comes in and he says I can exceed the expectation I did not meet in your life amen well some of you get it that's fine and stuff so some of you have no idea what I'm talking about you will know after you had about 27 or 28 and everything that you thought doesn't happen the same way but then you trust in the Lord and he just derails it and leads your life in such a way that you look back and you say only God deserves the glory if you have your Bible go with me to Psalm Psalm 92 
Psalm 92 and verse 12 until the end. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar, a cedar in Lebanon. And those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in the old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. If you're taking notes, you can write the title of this, um, this brief talk. It will be called The Palm Tree the palm tree you are the palm tree I am the palm tree and as you finish that could you just say this brief prayer out loud after me you can just be seated but you can just pray this out loud after me say Lord Jesus open my heart to your word everybody say Lord Jesus open my heart to your spirit Lord Jesus open my heart to your faith amen the palm tree is a very unique tree because well first of all it's a tree it's not an iPhone it's not an iPad and it's not a car it has a very interesting relationship with the soil every tree needs the soil in a very amazing way a tree cannot live without soil a tree gets sustained by the soil and every tree does not take breaks from the soil it lives in the soil when it's winter and it lives in the soil when it's summer it live, lives there during the day and it still lives there during the night the first thing I want you to know about the palm tree and if you're taking notes you can write this down is the palm tree is rooted in the ground the palm tree is rooted in the ground now this is pretty obvious and I don't think any of you have thought this was deep which is completely understandable because it, it it's a dumb moment it's aha of course yeah that palm tree is rooted in the ground that's pretty obvious that's a palm tree but if you think about it how important how powerful that is it's actually very powerful that God chooses to compare you to a palm tree not to your phone your phone is connected to the charger only when your phone has this battery thing on the right top corner and it goes red you don't connect your phone on the charger all the time you connect your phone to the charger only when it's not charged and then you go up to use it and then you charge it and you discharge it and many people's relationship with the Lord is just like the relationship of your iPhone with a charger on Sunday you come in and you got charged up You walk out and you feel good you feel great you're charged well after you walk out from this from the door until until next Wednesday whenever you have service the battery goes down and sometimes it goes so down that you come out dead it's pretty obvious the way some of us worship completely depleted battery gone and hopefully by the end of the service the battery got restarted again and that's how we live our life up and down charged not charged charged not charged and God says a righteous man is not like an iPhone with the charger he said a righteous man is like a palm tree that means he doesn't get connected to the ground to be disconnected he is connected to the ground permanently and always stays connected in book of Genesis it says that God in the beginning when he made the earth he made the sun the light and everything and then it says he spoke to the ground and he said let ground produce the trees and the plants indicating that the trees and the plants were not made by God they were made by the ground God spoke to the ground so that the ground will produce the trees and because the trees came from the ground the trees need the ground to live the trees live in the ground and without the ground the trees die amen yes nobody get it okay yes okay then the Bible says God goes further and he speaks to the sea 
and he says let the sea produce all kinds of living creatures in the sea indicating that God did not make the fish but God spoke to the sea so that the sea will produce the fish the all of the living creatures in the sea indicating that the fish and all of the other fishes that they need to see they live in the water and without the water they die amen and then the Bible says God goes in and he speaks to himself he said let us make men in our image and in our likeness and why is he doing that so that man will have an example of the way f f uh, trees came from the ground the way fish comes from the sea and man comes from God that means man's relationship with God is similar to the fish relationship with the water and the trees relationship with the ground fish does not just swim in the water like you bubble have fun go take a shower and walk on a solid ground the tree does not go into the soil on a weekend for two hours the tree lives in the soil every single day and God allowed that to happen to give you and I a clue of how a relationship between us and him is supposed to be that's why Paul says in him we move in him we live and in him we have our being your relationship with God must be rooted God's relationship with you is consistent does that mean Vlad we have to go and pray all the time Paul says play, pray without ceasing does that mean I have to be on my knees all the time to be in a relationship with God no but before I was married I was dating my beautiful wife she was not my wife at the time she was just a a beautiful single 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 girl from Vancouver and what I would do on Friday after I would finish with my duties at my job I would get into a car drive three and a half hours to Vancouver go to Albertsons which was really close to her house look for flowers on the sale and they were good condition and after that I would go and buy a card that also looked very nice and I hoped that it had a little sale I would rip the sale sticker off sign the card in the car put the perfume on because I knew a trick the girls don't care how you look they care how you smell and so I would come in with roses and the car knock on the door put the best smile the best attitude on walk in and welcome and try to win her heart and for two hours we would go in the park we would walk it was a memorizing just mesmerizing experience after that I would drop her at her apartment get into my car drive three and a half hours on this stupid 82 or 84 that highway and drive back back home and this happened for about six months okay and after that but once we got married something happened my relationship with her though even when she was here for three days but I am with her though she was not with me physically it's completely different marriage and dating are so completely different it's no longer just bringing flowers on Friday for two hours it's living yes I still do the flowers yes we still go out but it's different we live I sleep with her I live with her and even when she's not in the house we are together see some of us date God on Sunday you put on your best clothes you do your hair you bring your tithe and offering and you look over you like man I hope there will be a discount today during the tithe time we would walk in and after two hours we walk out and we feel like my God time is over the date is done until of course the next service God doesn't want you. remember God was never looking for a date God was always looking for a bride God is looking for a wife not for a date and his God wants to live with you he wants to breathe in you and he wants you to live in him can somebody say amen somebody say praise the Lord so the palm tree is a tree it's rooted in the ground I want you to notice a second thing about a palm tree is a palm tree withstands abuses a palm tree withstands abuses what does that mean that means that unlike other trees 
if you take a knife or an axe and you chop the bark of other trees all of the bark you remove the bark from the tree the tree will die because every tree that we have in the garden its life is in the bark and removing the bark would render the tree lifeless palm tree actually interestingly enough the life of the palm tree is not in its bark it's in its core meaning if you remove the bark now it still will not be comfortable it will not be pretty but the tree will live because it has life that comes from the inside not from the outside and allows it withstand and overcome abuses that people will do to it him or her the secret of the palm tree is this is that as a christian you through life will get hurt it's not if it's when it's not if it's if you have already been if my savior fulfilling the will of his father came back after the dead and showed his disciples scars on his hands scars on his feet and scars on his side if he could not get through the will of God without getting hurt good luck you won't you will get hurt and the reason we don't have scars today is not because we've never been hurt it's that we have not been properly healed everyone in here gets hurt everyone in here will get hurt a palm tree will overcome the hurt a palm tree will have the scars like Jesus and say look because the scar says I've been healed the wound says I've been hurt the wound says this is what people have done look what my mom have done look at my dad will have done look what that guy the girl has done but the scar says look what God has done in spite of what people have done a palm tree has a power to withstand abuses wounds that are neglected become wounds infected when the wounds become neglected and you say I feel this hurt I feel this pain it will go away next thing that happens you develop an infection you hate men I'll never get married I'll never have children I will never anytime there is word never or always that means there is a wound that's been neglected and you may say oh but look how unfair life is listen come to Jesus and tell him and he will tell you if I could not get through 33 years of life being perfect serving God perfectly and I could not get through it without acquiring this what do you expect out of life but my scars is to prove to you that you can touch him and they don't hurt no more you know why because when people gave me those when I was hanging on the cross and in the middle of my pain I didn't say once I come back I kill you your children all of, all of your Pharisees you bunch of ah! he did not do that the Bible says in the midst of the highest deepest emotional physical and mental pain he pronounced the words that turned the wound into a scar he said father forgive them they have no idea what they're doing when you allow forgiveness you allow God to take the wound turn it into a scar and take the scar and turn it into a star palm tree overcomes abuses there was a in Rwanda genocide there was one girl there who had a big family and these army men came in and mercilessly started to kill her village and she was with some 14 people in her family gathered in the house and these men came they took her family all of it dragged it outside and she was among hiding she was a little girl she was hiding amongst them and they shot every one of them right in front of her because one of the older members was standing in front of her when he got shot he fell and he fell on her they did not see that she was being covered by him and she wasn't killed 
what they did is they buried all of them including the girl who went numb because of the shock she's buried there for 13 hours alive other family members came back later few, uh, 13 hours later and started to dig through the dirt and they find all of them dead and they find this girl who wakes up from the shock of 13 hours being buried as a child and seeing all some 15 members of our family shot in front of her eyes something developed within her hate bitterness no trusting to people she moved to Europe as a refugee and she lived her life she started to develop sicknesses left and right her spine started to hurt her headaches started to come nightmares started to come because these wounds that she acquired it wasn't her fault she didn't treat them right she didn't find a proper cure she thought that if I hold on to this hate this will help me to stay alive because if I forgive they will go off and they will be free from this and I don't want to let them be free from it until she comes to one meeting and this pastor Peter he's talking about forgiveness and she sits there with this angry face thinking if you would have a clue what was done to me you will never dare to use the word forgiveness again in my presence and she comes to the front not to repent but to tell the preacher of what she's been through and that she has every reason in this world not to forgive and he told her says yes I don't understand you but I can tell you of a man who does and he was healed you are not healed and God wants to heal you emotionally tears that will go down her eyes she said I will forgive he leads her in his prayer she surrenders her hate and forgiveness in that very instant God heals her spine and heals her headaches she goes back to Rwanda marries a man now she's a pastor's wife of a 3,000 member church and every one of the men who murdered her family she led to Jesus in jail why because a palm tree overcomes abuse you may have been hurt you will be hurt and some hurts I'm not talking about sexual abuse some hurts I'm not talking about just verbal abuse some hurts might be just by not getting the the affirmation from your daddy from your mama I know what I'm talking about I grew up in a perfect home my, my, my family my parents are amazing I've never seen my dad hurt my mom well I can't say that for my mom but <laughs> my mom she's the she's the aggressive one she's the she's the fire one I think I got it from her and so she she's the one that she's very kind very loving toward us the children and my parents they've been married for over 26 20 28 years and so they're wonderful parents but there's something that I always craved I did not know I craved that as, as a young man is that I wanted to have affirmation from my dad I heard preachers talk about that and I thought weak sauce <laughs> affirmation I don't need dad to tell me he loves me I know he loves me until there was a moment I still can describe to you every single thing in the room and how I felt at that day it was about five years ago we lived on this street Kubota my dad it was the evening Friday night my dad comes and he went to Lowe's and during Lowe's he was getting some some tools or some uh, some material and the girl who was there I think her name is Nicole she recognized my dad's last name we have a t local TV show and where I my sermons are preached there and she knew about me or my life from before and so she she recognized the same last name she says wait I, I know the person with the same last name she was indicating that she knew about me and my dad says what is his name and 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 she says well there's his name is Vlad I think so my dad's like oh well that's my son so here's my dad on Friday night comes to me and with this happy news up to this point I would say that I didn't really feel like I've ever heard my dad say son I'm proud of you for what you're doing for God I knew that he was but he would never tell me so here I am expecting my dad this is the moment at the age of 23 my dad is gonna tell me because I mean he's been waiting for 23 years to tell me he's proud of me it was on a couch he says hey son I I um he said in Lowe's this interesting incident happened my mouth gets open like somebody's about to give me a million dollars I am so happy I'm like so excited this is my dad this is not somebody saying your sermon touched me God healed me when you preached no, this is this is your dad this is this is really what you're doing for and here he is he says hey and this person recognized the last name and I'm like uh, and so he's like well it was so awesome that they saw my last name I was like and 
He's like, well, this was really great, and I got the tools. I thought they'll give me a discount for it. I was like, and? Well, it, it, was, it, it was good. I was like, that's it? That, that, that's all you're going to say? And in the back of my mind, I didn't say it to him because it would be embarrassing. I'm 23 years old. I'm a youth pastor, and here I am crying because my dad doesn't tell me he's proud of me. I mean, I'm not going to be a weak sauce until my dad left. And I actually embarrassingly to admit I started to cry because I realized I'm carrying inside a wound and my dad doesn't realize he's hurting me by not letting me know that what I'm doing he's okay he's proud of me and this wound I started to carry I was aware of it so I protected it I did not want it to get into something stupid that other people tried to do but I knew I had it but this really got I would say fixed during my time with my wife when we went to sushi disclosure I was not a big fan of sushi I go to sushi because of my life love for wife my wife loves sushi sushi restaurants are the biggest insult to a human race and I will explain why in the restaurant before they give you the meal they will bring you an appetizer sushi places have a mocking way of feeding you through appetizers. In this particular Japanese sushi place, they brought a big plate. When they saw the plate, on my stomach leaped for joy. Because I saw big plates in Olive Garden. Whew, free refills. So I'm excited for the appetizer. And then when the big plate came, I almost fainted. Because I saw seven leaves with some weird sauce spilled over it. I thought it was decoration and so I said what is this they said well this is appetizer I said appetite what appetite what I was, I'm like appetizer so I ate those seven leaves and I said I am more hungry looking at this plate I said what is this madness and my wife says well that's the whole point they're trying to not feed you but get you ready for the meal I was like yeah but that's wrong as I have this picture, I am praying in my prayer and the Lord brings this to my mind and He says, Vlad, your parents' love is an appetizer. He said, it's never meant to satisfy you. It's only meant to wake up an appetite for my love. He said, you're looking at your dad and your dad gave you so much, but you're counting the leaves and you said, I am still hungry. He said, I will never allow your dad to love you so much that will cause you not need my love. I will never let your wife, your husband, your teacher, your, your fiance, I will never let no one love you so much that at the end when God's love comes, you say, I am full. Could it be instead of cursing the seven leaves with the weird sauce on it, that you can say, God, I thank you for the seven leaves. My parents did the best they could, but they didn't do enough. Why? Because you wanted me to have room for you. You know what our problem is? We expect too much out of people, which causes us to expect too little out of God. And we become too frustrated. And in that prayer, I would say, my wound, it didn't get healed completely. But something happened. And now when I feel like I don't get that, I snap in my mind. I can receive them from the Lord because this is an appetizer. And my wife, she's a fantastic, big appetizer. But she's not. The main meal if she's the main meal then she has to be God if she's God that means she has to be omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient and if you don't know what those three words are they're fancy words for saying everywhere present all-knowing and all-powerful she cannot be that if I try to make her out of God she will die in the first second and I will be frustrated but if she be the best appetizer and my father becomes the heavy meal then my wife is happy because what she gives I appreciate what I give she appreciates and my God is happy because I come to him with a hungry stomach God is not happy when you come to him not wanting him God is not happy when you come to him and you had everything in life God wants to be wanted but he can't be wanted if everything in life is handed over to you that's why in life you won't have everything you want so that you can receive them from the Lord. Can somebody say amen? 
So the palm tree is rooted in the ground. The palm tree withstands abuses. Number three, if you are taking notes. Is everybody still with me? You have a little bit of room for a little bit more? Are you guys done? You just want to pray? A little, little bit more? Okay, let's do a little bit more. So the, the, the third thing I want you to write down is the palm tree breaks every chain as it grows. Write this down. The palm tree breaks every chain as it grows. When the trees are young, what they do usually to cause the trees to grow straight, I've done that in my own little pitiful small garden, is they would put a little stick around the tree, is they would put a rope around the tree and tie it to a stick so that when the tree grows, it grows straight instead of growing crooked. And sometimes the owners forget to remove the rope and typically, not all, but typically a tree will let the rope grow inside of the tree and if some of you have seen this in the, sometimes in apple trees where the tree is bigger but there will be this bend in the place where there is a rope because the rope was there anybody have seen this pictures okay and so there will be this because the rope was there so the tree will make room for a rope and will cause the rope to grow inside of the tree this will never happen to a palm tree a palm tree is a tree that if you put the strongest chain on this earth around it, as a palm tree is young, as the tree begins to grow, it will never allow the chain to grow inside. It will break the chain. The chains don't grow inside. They break. The lesson for us is this. The issues that you have, the struggles you are encountering. As a young Christian, they may have a hold on your life. But as you grow in your relationship with Jesus, they will break. The most important part is not to let these chains become a part of you. But to distinguish you from what you struggle. You're not a sick person wanting to be healed. You are a healthy person fighting sickness. You're not a weak person trying to get strong. You are a strong person fighting weakness. You're not a porn pervert trying to get pure. You are a pure person fighting lust. You're not a person who says, I have an issue. No, no, no. The issue should not have you. You should distinguish you from what you struggle. God wants to set people free. And many times God sets people free in an instant. But there are times the freedom only comes as you grow in Him. And we've seen, you know, through the grace of God in our church just two weeks ago, a lady named Jasmine from California. She is originally from Fiji. She came to our church for prayer. As a baby, she was dedicated to Satan because her parents and grandpa grandparents were witch doctors. She describes in her experience at night, a being would come to her in a physical form. Take her by her feet. And begin to torment her almost every single night at times this being will speak drag her out of the bed and beat her and torment her on the floor her husband said many times when he sleeps with his wife he feels and he senses that there is he can see it but he knows there's someone else laying in bed between them she's a married woman and she is a pastor's wife. Two weeks ago, she came for prayer. During prayer, as the prayer was being offered, immediately the demon spoke out to her. Like all the stuff that you see in the Bible where the demon says, you are the son of God, that's exactly the same way. She begins to convulse, her body begins to move like this, she begins to just go crazy. And the demon said, it came through the great father grandfather who has done this and this and that and next thing that happens is when the demon was cast out the, the woman immediately collapsed like breathless on the floor she gets up and she says I, I don't know what happened but I feel so much lighter and it's been two weeks and she said after that that 
being never came again. Jesus is able to set people free right away. We know this as Christians. It might happen visibly right away when the person, you know, just on the floor rolling and vomit comes out and we've seen a lot of these even a particular young girl at the age of 17 when she came to our church during one of the prayer lines a few months ago and then uh, at the age of five she was dedicated to satan american girl named willow and her finger was cut as a sign of blood covenant with the devil and right in the middle of prayers we're praying she begins to uncontrollably shake and violently begin to throw things until six men had to hold her down. She bruised one of the men's ribs and 16 or 20 minute battle to just remove that evil spirit. And then the girl gets up and says, what happened to me? I don't know what's going on. God is able to deliver. Can somebody say amen? Nothing is impossible to our God. And some of you think, well, well demons, they only happen in Africa. <laughs> Look at your own backyard. When it comes to pornography, when it comes to cigarettes, when it comes to alcohol, when it comes to masturbation, when it comes to all of these things. These things are demonic chains that Satan wants to put around our life. But there are freedoms that don't happen in prayer. They happen as you grow. There are some things in your life that you will not be free just by coming and the pastor pouring a bucket of oil on your head. But you will be free as you like a palm tree you begin to grow, 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 grow and the chains don't become part of you but they slowly break, 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 break and you begin to grow in the, in the name of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Jesus said you will know the truth. What is the truth? Muhammad said I'm the prophet of truth. Buddha said I'm the seeker of truth. Jesus said I am the truth. The truth. You know what Jesus is saying? When you know me, you be free. You know who he was speaking to? The Bible says to his disciples. And you know what they replied? Just the same thing what you would reply. We are not in bondage to no one. And Jesus says, did you forget Egypt? <laughs> For God's sake, did you forget Roman Empire you're in bondage to right now? See, the worst part about spiritual bondage is when you're in it, you're completely oblivious. And you don't know you're in bondage until you're free. Because when you're in bondage, you think this is normal. You think looking, watching porn once a month is normal because you found out all your friends do it. You know that Jesus did not look at pornography? Which means pornography is not normal. You realize other people struggle with this and it's, so it's normal. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. He says, as you know me, the truth, I will set you free. When you like a palm tree begins to grow, something will happen. The chains Satan put around you as a younger Christian, you couldn't beat them. You went to one prayer. You fasted, you prayed. You said, oh, I can't get through. I can't. But Jesus says, as you grow, as you grow, as you grow, these things will begin to break out of your life. Somebody say amen. I have uh, noticed how little chickens are born. It's a very interesting story. If you have chickens in your house, you, you can maybe give me your experience as well. But how they're usually born is that the mama chicken produces an egg and the mama chicken puts an egg in the nest. And then she comes and she sits on the eggs for about 21 days. And as she sits on the eggs, what she does with that is that she provides a heat and something electrifying that comes from her body that causes the little chicken inside of the egg to get bigger, 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 bigger. And then there comes a point where you actually could almost see the chicken inside of the egg but the shell is still there. It's about like on the 20th something day and this is the moment you're so anticipating and you're like man I hope she's gonna help them to break from the shell. And when I was younger, I wanted to help the chicken because I knew they did not know about the father's love. And they did not know how they should love their children. Like to help him come out from the shelves. So I knew that they did not have the revelation. So I wanted to take a little, little hammer and come and break the egg. Just break the shell so they, they will have a little help. I mean, come on. Everybody appreciates help once in a while. Until my daddy told me. He says, don't do that. He says, that's how God designed it and that's how it's supposed to be. And as I would watch that as a little child, it would register in my mind. And now I know something about the Lord. 
the Lord there will be issues in your life shells in your life that you will come to church you will come in the word of God and as you begin to grow and there will be particular things like God I, I need to really be just just be free I'm just so sick and tired of it and it would seem like God touches every area of your life except that area and it seems like God touches every other person and when it comes to you he just moves quickly why and then you're convinced I'm cursed you're convinced he hates me I know because I stole a gum from a friend at the third grade and he still cannot let it go you're convinced he really pays back for something but actually you know what God is doing God wants you to keep sitting in the nest called church and his word and keep sitting under his presence why because as you grow he will see you break the shell that you want him to help you break because somebody say amen Can somebody say amen I want to challenge you today don't stop growing keep growing in your relationship with Jesus because as you grow there are things that will break in your life only as you grow the last thing and we're going to come to prayer is the first thing we said the palm tree is rooted in the ground the second thing we said the palm tree overcomes abuses the third thing we said is the palm tree breaks chains as the palm tree grows and the last thing is the palm tree during the storm bends and therefore it doesn't break you probably you, I'm not sure whether you guys have big winds in Portland area where we come from we have really big winds and these winds what they do is they break the trees who are stubborn there are trees that are stubborn means that they 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 face the storm on their own and they face the storm telling I'm gonna beat you I'm gonna overcome you I'm gonna challenge you and <laughs> And then they break and we see this all the time that sometimes when after a big win you drive to work or you drive to a coffee shop or something and you see like one tree broke and you see another tree completely just tossed on the road and these are the trees who during the storm do not have the capacity and flexibility to bend a palm tree has a very unique flexibility inside of it is that when a storm comes it bends sometimes it bends so crazy that if you watch on the news during some of the tropical storms like you like Oh, it's gonna break right <sighs> didn't break <laughs> because it literally almost the top of the tree almost touches the bottom and you feel like it will snap but the reason why it doesn't snap is because it has the ability to bend and because it bends during the storm it doesn't break during the storm and when the storm passes which they all do it goes right back up storms happen always they come to all people in all shapes and forms to the righteous and to the unrighteous but not all people handle their storms the same way some people handle the storms saying I will get through this on my own and they put their eye in the way and next thing that happens two three months later four months later if the storm goes longer they snap and they break some throw away the bible and walk away and says you know what this is what happened to my mom she passed away we all prayed for healing and this didn't happen well i really thought that god is gonna came in here but it didn't happen and so and the storm is gone that incident is long gone but they are still broken whereas other people can go through that and when the storm is over and they go right back up why because in the storm they did not try to stand through the storm they tried to bend through the storm and as you bend you don't break ask Job and he will tell you that a storm came into his life a hurricane a tornado came in it was so huge it was so big what I love Job for is the Bible says the first thing that he did he went Bible says and he bowed down and he worshiped you know what Job did he bent it was 40 something chapters storm kept going 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 and when the storm left which they all do and the last chapter you see Job goes whew, right back up most of people this never happens 
I want to tell you something. Every storm you will ever have in your life will never be eternal. They will all pass. But after the storms pass, if during it you bend, you will go right back up. If during it you break and you try to weather it in your own, something will happen is that you will break. And the storm is over and you become a broken person. I know this from my own personal experience. Some of you, you heard my testimony. Some of you haven't and I will repeat it for those of you because some of you have not had it, did not hear it before. When I was born, during my birth, um, there was complications with my birth and because of that, I was in the hospital for two years as a little baby. And I was going from one sickness to another and uh, there was uh, heavy problems with my eyes. The doctors told my parents that my optical nerve is damaged. Meaning that I might have problems with my eyes, I might have problems with my head and I might not be in my right mind as I grow up. Which was a very fearful report to my parents because I'm the oldest of five, I have two brothers and two sisters. And, but then after two years I eventually, parents said that I was brought home and everything seemed fine with me and everything seemed fine with my eyes until a little bit later as I started growing up they started to notice that my eyes are not like straight like one eye is a little bit smaller than the other and that this this part is a little bit weaker and they started to take me to the doctors and they realized that when I look up one eye looks up and the other one doesn't does not move and because they wanted to kind of protect me from you know going through feeling shameful and everything they gave me one surgery at a young age I had one surgery in Ukraine and when we came to the United States they offered me a second surgery and both of these surgeries made a very small dent in my problem but didn't really solve it. Because of my optical nerve damage I have extreme sensitivity to the sun in my head. Which means anytime the sun goes up I would have extreme migraine headaches. And because one of the eyes is smaller than the other, anytime as a teenager I would get met by somebody, the first question they would ask me without asking me my name is what, what, what happened to you? Which was the same way as if you would take a knife and just stab me. Because a person who is insecure and who is extremely sensitive to their physical appearance at the age of 14 having pimples and security is below zero and the first thing people notice about you is not your name and they don't know who you are but they only see your eyes and they think that you went through some kind of an accident you're deformed or maybe crippled maybe maybe mental perhaps and that it just it just simply kills you on the inside when you grow up with that and on the top of that you have headaches it's very hard to understand how God can love someone have a plan for their life when you're presented with that at a young age, I was convinced God had a plan for everyone in the world, including Hitler, except me. I was convinced that God has a destiny for every person in the world except me. I was convinced inside I will never be married because I am simply an accident on this earth. God made everyone. He came to me. He said, oops, there was a little problem. Let's keep him there until he dies. Once he gets to heaven, everything will be right. And therefore, at the age of 13 and a half, I started to contemplate suicide. I started to ask God for things that God can do in my life where I could be either murdered in a car accident because I did not want to take my own life because I knew that's gonna be bad but if somebody else could do that for me or if an accident could happen and this way I could still go to heaven and I could leave this earth. I felt like I was a burden to anybody I came in contact with. I had no gifts I had nothing good to offer to anyone and nobody ever wanted me and I was convinced of that. When it came to prayer, it was hard for me to believe God had a plan. It was hard for me to believe God loves me because I had questions nobody could answer. I knew in my mind if God could heal me of my eyes, this would be God's way of proving I made a mistake and I still love you. So I went to every prayer I could find so God can heal me. I laid my hands on this is your day with Pastor Benihin more times than you can count. I found oil because if my pastor didn't have enough anointing I thought maybe if I could try on, my, on myself that didn't help me. I thought maybe I had a demon and so I tried to cast out even or do some even deliverance because I was convinced if I could get healed of my eyes I will be a normal person who will have a plan for their life. At the age of about 13 and a half and 14, this started to weigh down deep in my soul. Where in my freshman year at the keyboarding class, I skipped keyboarding class because I was embarrassed to stand in front of a group of 25 students. So half of, of this. I was embarrassed to stand in front of a group of 25 students 
for three and a half minutes. So I skipped the class. I was so shy that if a person walked by, I would run and hide. I was convinced I was an accident. I would come from school almost every day, every other day. I would lock myself in the room and I started to just literally cry and whine to God, why did you make me like this? Why cannot, can't you take this pain and these problems away from my life? And as I would whine and complain and grumble and ask all these questions, I would always end on the part of saying, it's beginning to feel the presence of God. And I would feel the presence of God in such a good way that I would begin to worship the God I just complained to. And I would enjoy that so much that after a while I became addicted to complaining because this was my way to the presence of God. I even forgot that I have a problem. And now it's as though I come to prayer not necessarily to cry about my problem and my issue and complain but because I found a high I could never find. I never did drugs but I found something here and the way it got me there is through complaining and grumbling. And after a few years I felt like the Holy Spirit through other people kind of taught me said, hey you can get to my presence without screaming and complaining to me. You can straight get into my presence and next thing that happens, the headaches that I had, they were gone. And today my eyes are not healed. One day they will. You know what he got healed? Everything. And my eyes today become the greatest testimony for the glory of God. I got married and no one asks me what happened to your eyes. Nobody. Do you know why? Because I don't care about it. When I stopped caring about it, everybody else did. And most people don't even notice that. Why? Because I don't notice it. And that is completely gone. I still have the same eyes but a completely different spirit. Because when the storm, during the storm I learned a very valuable lesson is that if you bend and you begin to bend in worship and you begin to bend in your seeking the presence of God, something happens. This thing passes by and God raises you up and the things that were supposed to break you. The things that the devil says, oh wait, oh he believes those lies, he will die, he's not going to make it. And God says, wait, 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 if he's going to come to me, I will mess him up for good and he will go right back up. And the devil is a liar and his plan was defeated. I want to tell you is God, God can use you too. Some of you, your problem is you're too gifted. You're convinced you're special. You're convinced you walk around with this attitude, I am something. Did you know that the middle letter of word I, of word sin is I. The middle letter of word pride is I. And the middle letter of word Lucifer is I. Anytime I is the center of your life, you are in sin, in pride and following Lucifer. You know what's going to happen? When we fall, when we have this issue, I, I, that's why for some people it's harder to bend because of I. For other people it's harder to bend because we have always why. But if we worship instead of putting our I or why in the front, God is going to cause the storm to pass away and we're going to rise back up for the glory of God. I want you to rise to your feet.